Welcome to this video on hydration for exercise. We'll talk about the importance of water for health, but we'll also be focusing on the role of water in exercise and its impact on exercise performance. So we need water. Adult male bodies are 60% water and females 55%. And water plays a crucial role in both general health and also in exercise performance. Water is needed for a range of functions. It has a role to play in digestive health, joint health, chemical and hormonal balance, blood composition, and importantly, regulation of body temperature. Now it's recommended in the UK that adults consume six to eight glasses of water per day to replace the water that's naturally lost, predominantly through urination and sweating. And this equates to around about 1.2 liters of water per day. During exercise, the body's temperature rises. And now, in order to keep the body's core temperature within an acceptable range, the body responds by sweating. And sweating allows heat to be dissipated from the skin, which in turn cools the body. Now, this loss of water through sweating sets off a chain of events that, if not responded to with appropriate fluid intake, can lead to performance losses. The body is commonly considered to be dehydrated once water loss reaches 2% of body mass. Now hydration is clearly therefore a very important issue for endurance athletes in particular to consider. But for any athlete and any exerciser, it's something that you should be aware of both for your training and for your performance. So significantly dehydration causes a reduction in overall blood plasma volume which makes the blood increasingly viscous or thick or sticky if you prefer and the more dehydrated we become the more viscous the blood becomes and there are a few problems that this can cause the most immediate impact of this reduced plasma volume is in fact thirst now baroreceptors sense the change in plasma volume and that causes the release of an enzyme called renin which is a key stimulant for thirst. So if you're dehydrated, your body will tell you. And so you should listen and should respond to your thirst. This thickening of the blood puts additional strain onto the cardiovascular system. And then the system then struggles to maintain the blood flow required to sustain both the oxygen supply to the working muscles and the removal of waste products. So a third impact of reduced blood plasma volume is that the sweat rate drops. Now, since sweating is the primary mechanism by which we cool our body during exercise, our ability to thermoregulate is significantly hampered when there's insufficient water in the system. And as a result, the core temperature can rise beyond the normal range as the body continues to gain heat. And the impacts of both reduced blood flow and continued heat gain is obvious our performance begins to suffer. So let's look more specifically about how performance suffers. What are the performance impacts of exercise induced dehydration? This table is amended from Alabama A&M and Auburn universities from 2003, and it shows how the extent of dehydration relates to a number of physiological effects. So where one to 2% of weight is lost through dehydration, the core body temperature will rise, we've mentioned this already. But then at 3%, there will be a significant increase in body temperature, and that's especially the case during aerobic exercise. Then at 5%, uh, the temperature increases further and we start to see some really substantial effects and impacts on performance. There's a decrease in both aerobic ability and in muscular endurance, which makes sense to us, I'm sure. What we might not realise is there may also be a 20 to 30 percent reduction in both strength and power output. And furthermore, at this stage, the athlete is susceptible to heat exhaustion and will need at least five hours to rehydrate from this point. And the way I remember that is that five percent weight loss by dehydration requires five hours uh, to replenish or to rehydrate from that point. So 5%, 5 hours. Then at around about 6% uh, of body weight lost via water, the athlete's probably going to begin to experience muscle spasms and some cramping. 
And then if things get more severe, once we get past about 10% of weight loss uh, through dehydration, things get pretty serious. Core body temperature is now excessively high and heat stroke becomes pretty likely. Heat injury and circulatory collapse are also possible. And the worst outcome of those is that we might in fact die from circulatory collapse. So very serious impacts of this level of dehydration. So given these impacts of dehydration on performance, the worst of which can be very severe, it's clear then, isn't it, that hydration for exercise is a key consideration. So check out the video on hydration strategies for athletes to find out what can and should be done to ensure adequate hydration during exercise. See you there.